I'll call this meeting to order for January the 4th, 2022, our very first meeting of the, of the new year, and Happy New Year to everybody and, and welcome. First of all, on the agenda, or not on the agenda, but just uh, outside the agenda, I want to do some recognitions of some of our staff that have been with the town of Swan River for a number of years. Firstly, not with us tonight, but uh, Mr. Jordan Rooks has been served with the town of Swan River for 20 years of service, so council does uh, uh, thank him for his years of service. And tonight in the room, we have with us Mr. Brendan Fedorchuk, and he's been with the town of Swan River for 10 years. So we do have a certificate here of, of appreciation and your 10 year pin as well. So we'll pass it on to you a little bit later on. Thank so you. thank you again for your service. <clears throat> Result of the amended agenda for January 4th, 2022, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lentoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the December 21st, 2021 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Receptions and delegations. Tonight we have with us a delegation from the Community Foundation of Swan Valley Incorporated. We do welcome uh, the chair, Ms. Parsons, and uh, Ms. Uh, Donna Martin, and also Mr. Webster. So we welcome to you to our meeting, our first meeting of the year, and uh, I'll uh, turn everything basically over to you. And if there's any questions after your presentation, then council will have an opportunity to ask. Is that fair enough? Okay. So earlier on in uh, the or late in the year, I uh, Tim Mandel and myself, the former chair, met with um, Mr. Poole, and we discussed the possibility of the town of Swan River uh, starting an endowment with the residual payout from the Dr. Rich estate. Um, we had some discussion, and it was a very good discussion, I thought. And uh, we offered to Derek that uh, our board would attend to uh, follow up on the meeting if that was requested, and, and that's why we're here today. Um, most well, all of you know uh, that we all have all been named for parties in the estate, so we will all be receiving some funds. Um, I'm, I'm ours obviously stop. will. Don't. Will, I'm gonna stop. Should this not be in camera then? If we're having a discussion, I will. No, I'm. Anything. Okay. No details. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. no details. Um, so that brings us to where we are today. Um, you've been provided with some information uh, about the foundation, and we just wanted to come and, and entertain questions. Um, we have a few uh, little, I guess, tidbits to add uh, to what you've been given already. Um, just kind of a summary of where things are today. Uh, we just, in December, received the uh, what we call the spending policy from our endowments. Uh, which will be used for all of our work in 2022. And this year we will we received $146,500, which brings our overall uh, giving up through our spending policy since 2005 to $1,180,000. Um, our market value at the end of June, uh, June 31st is June 30th is our year end. Our market value of the funds, all of our funds, was three million nine hundred and sixty-nine thousand. Um, as of December thirty-first, we have grown to seventy-one individual funds within our the overall foundation. Um, we've had it's kind of a record, I think. Uh, we've had since July of twenty twenty, so a year and a half, we've had thirteen new funds created. So that's been been really uh, really amazing. Um, and down Manitoba, which is Kind of like our sister, uh, well, not I don't know. They're our parent, I guess. Our parent. They they provide uh, guidance. They're they're uh, an arm of the Winnipeg Foundation. They've just recently been working on some forecasts, and they did you know based on our market value and reasonable assumptions that people things will continue the way they have. They've projected that in right now we have a market value of four million. That in ten years we will have a market value of ten million. And in 25 years, approximately 43 million. And that's just, just Swan River. 
um, at, and I guess it, right now our uh, spending rate, what we give, what we draw from the funds to give out to all our grants, education, um, de designated funds is 4% of the market value. And so that would um, mean, of course, that in 10 years we'll be giving out 400000 during our granting and, and giving periods. So it's quite a quite an increase from from where we are today, 140. Um, the some of the I guess details that you would have to know in consideration of what you might do with with uh, in the future are the Swan Valley Community Foundation's admin fee. We do take an admin fee out of each fund to to run our business. Uh, you can call it a business; it is a business. And right now, it's it's uh, set at 0.9 percent, so just a hair under one percent. Um, the Winnipeg Foundation charges us half a percent for all of the support and, you know, every, everything they do for us. I mean, they're, they're amazing. And then for the investment fee is 0.35%. So that comes to a total of 1.75%. So that's everything, you know, you, you wouldn't get at a private, you'd, you'd be lucky 2% or 3% if you were investing your money and you wouldn't get the support and the I don't think that that you would if if you went uh, our 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 way. <laughs> that uh, those fees, our fee is adjusted annually. The other fees are set is set by the Winnipeg Foundation, and we don't have any control over that. Um, I did bring along a sample. Uh, you have a it's an actual fund, and I just thought it was interesting, just so you could kind of see. Um, there isn't one that that has a value that we might. Well, this this could be, I guess. Um, this fund, if you see right at the top, was created right around this time, but in 2009. So that's like 13 years ago. And if you go down to midway down uh, under contribution summary, that the donor or donors put in $200,000. You can see that $197,500. And so up, up above there, 301 is where the market value of that fund is today. So in 13 years, that, that fund has gained $100,000 in value. So it's just a sample of what, you know, if I brought a brand new one, it doesn't really mm -hmm. give you uh, kind of an indication of what could happen. And then there's, it, 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 we're transparent. I mean, nothing is hidden. There, it shows all your fees and, and different things. This, um, the market value at October 1st is the Winnipeg Foundation, is the date that they use for that payout that I talked about that we just received. So that's... Um, that's how they work things. And I didn't really have anything else. Did you guys have anything to add? Um, right. So I don't. You mean a donor? Yeah. They have. Yeah. Okay. So when in the letter that that we that we sent you earlier on, we talked about uh, in your case. There's, we offer five types of funds to donors, uh, and in your case, an, a directed or an agency fund would be the one uh, that would fit. Um, you're not a, a donor that's going to be changing your mind every every year uh, on what you're going to do. You're not a, you wouldn't be giving a scholarship out. So it, it's an agency fund is, uh, and once it's set up, um, there's really no making any changes to it. Um, if you guys decide to go the route of, of creating an endowment, absolutely the details as to how you're going to do it internally um, would be could be worked out, and, and that's not that's not um, not hard to do. Um, what would happen is every year, like say if, if the well, I don't know the value, just let's just use this example here. <laughs> this uh, fund has around uh, twelve thousand. That was um, right at the very bottom. 11,274 is what came to the foundation this year. So if the town of Swan River were to create a, an endowment, then once a year, we would write you a check for whatever that fund generated. So, and I mean, we can't talk about the details obviously, but um, the will indicates what's, what's to be done with it. So, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, and the other two, uh, Representatives want to speak at all? Or are they tongue tied or shy? Yeah, no, we prepped, we prepped and thought it was the ringleader today. Her or on charge. I thought maybe the chair might want to say a couple well, of words. Well, you know what? I, I would um, feel very strongly about this kind of an opportunity. Um, 
I know it's a challenge always when when you're looking forward. It's it's kind of like when you have kids and you want to talk about putting away for their education, and you get done paying for diapers and formula, and you wonder where you're going to come up with that money to do those kind of things. But I don't think anyone who's taken that step of investing long term like that's ever regretted it. Um, it's it's an investment, and it's an investment in the future of the community. Um, it's there for you always and our rate of growth like it's hard not to be excited about ten million dollars in ten years and Even last year in comparison we gave just over a hundred thousand dollars this year hundred forty thousand um, It takes time But once you hit your stride and you hit that tipping point where all of a sudden it starts to build It could be huge. It'd be it'd be a huge gift that you That's going to always give back always Potentially, it could be more than ten million. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, and and that's if you don't touch it. Like if you continue to add to it, if you you know that's the other side of it. Um, the power of the Winnipeg Foundation, it's you're not going to find those rate of returns in a GIC or in a in a savings account or um, you know that there's a lot of powerful players here behind us to make this work for you. Um, so I. I feel it's definitely worth the conversation, for sure, yeah. Just long term, like uh, the opportunities for yourselves to make choices and know what's coming to you. And even just looking at this fund example, like we're only talking 300,000 and it's returning $11,000. So that, you know, there's there's money there that you can earmark, you know, that you know you'll have to do some things or put towards things that you need. <clears throat> so. And we'll have that opportunity, you know, to speak about it, you know, further. You know, it's early in the game for us right now, obviously, as you know, but something to start to think about. So yep. this is good to have that conversation. Councillor White, just uh, two comments. Number three, thank you. What a wonderful uh, endeavor for the community as a whole. So that's just so everyone goes way beyond the trail to go down. That's all that's behind. I'm comfortable with all. We are all. Here. This is awesome. This is very enlightening. I, I went it through. And I think it's a super job to tell more. I thought maybe get a little bit more out into the general public. Try to identify those you know, farmers, all his buddies, and send them a personal copy. And uh, I don't know if it's fair to ask a question. Do you know what the status of the rich estate is? Is it moving on? Is I don't think so. Yeah, we're goes? not going to discuss yeah. that right now. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Councilor DeLorean. Um, I guess, first of all, to echo Councillor White's comment, thank you for all the work you do in the community. You guys are the pillars of the community as far as the, the, this is awesome what you guys do. Um, so if we set up an endowment, that, that money would come back to the town of Swan River every, every year for us to use for whatever purposes outlined in the will? Or, the interest. Okay. Yeah. But now, and then I also see in here that there's also a donor advisement if we wanted to set it up as something that was dispersed to the community, like like how you do when you're giving. Is that is that an option too, or? Well, that would be up to you guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you could totally do like you could have a theoretically you could have a small grant intake if you wanted of your own for a certain. And we would have input into where that money was allocated. Really, like it'd be like what, what you call a donor advised fund. Well, you would like what will happen with this if this goes through is you guys get a check every year and you will do what Dr. Rich wants you to do <laughs> if, if that's the way you're doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we can, we would be, a, we could be a help with that as well. Like if that is something that you guys, or maybe one year you want to open it up to all the small um, recreation groups within the Valley and take grant applications to see what they want to do with the money. Uh, we can help with that. Yeah. Councilor Morio. Um, so two questions about building on Councilor Gloria's one. What's the difference between a donor advised fund and a designated fund? A, de a designated fund or an agency fund, that is a fund that it, in there's a con, like everybody that starts a, an endowment, like a, their own fund with us, has a contract to sign. Except when someone passes, their will becomes the contract because they're not there obviously to do it. So there's some details in the uh, agreement and in a designated or agency fund, you have the the organization that's receiving the money has to be have charitable status. The town of Swan River does have charitable status. So does the United Church, or you know, there's many other 
uh, uh, charities in our town. And so what would happen in that case with a designated is every year, the 4%, the community foundation just gives the town of Swan River a check. With a donor advised fund, um, what, what happens in those are more, that's more for individuals. Um, every year that person, the donor, as long as they're living, has to let me know what charity they want their, uh, their interest payout to go to each year. So I'm not sure that that really satisfies kind of what we're talking about here, but we definitely can have a discussion about that at some point. I, I think you guys would just want to receive it and then it would go to whatever you set up when you right. create the fund, if you if you do. I think okay. that that's... And then on that sheet, like that fund statement that you gave here as an example, it shows like market value. Yep. Uh, and I understand how it grows if the markets are good, but what happens like say if there's a market crash? Well, okay. <laughs> it can go down. If things went down drastically, we could theoretically receive less money from the Winnipeg Foundation next year. We um, we do have a we work closely with the Winnipeg Foundation every year. They they analyze our funds, making sure we we allow a little bit of uh, for inflation, and it's usually we work on about a seven percent uh, return on investment. So that gives us the four percent we were talking about our fees, their fees, and then a bit of room and once once a fund has the if you call it the uh, growth uh, that's what i call it the difference between what was put in and where the market is now of a hundred thousand it would be like it would take a well it would have to be bad i guess for it to ever drop into the principal but so, so is the original principal secured yes it oh it's not secure no no so not people, not guaranteed that risk too yeah like yeah yeah total market yeah, total, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Thanks. We don't want to talk like that. Yeah, <laughs> those are bad words, but it, it, yeah, yeah. We always like to say the money is there in perpetuity, but theoretically, I mean, if, if we went down to 20% market value, yeah, it would be into the principal. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Well, you know, I, I, everybody knows so far the recipients of any of the grants uh, over the number of years, you know, kudos to the people that had the vision to start this, and and uh, and, and the donors and families and so forth that uh, have built this fund up to where it is today and where we're going. Like you said, you know, uh, ten million in, in what they said ten years or something like that. But you know, I was able to come to one of your events where you do gave out those sponsor those uh, donors or sponsors or awards or whatever you want to call them, but such a great thing individuals and organizations that have uh, benefited from this and if we didn't have it we wouldn't have that you know right so it's, it's been very beneficial to us as a community as a whole for the whole Swan River Valley and uh, you know from us at least that uh, we thank you for your your time and efforts that you put into it every single day and to your entire board the past board and, and uh, the present board uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, it's, it does pay dividends in the end, and we're very grateful for it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any other closing remarks? If you're good, then we'll continue on. That. I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All right. All right, moving on then. Five, uh, in there, uh, six communications, 6.1. Received at the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, letter dated December 21st, 2021, regarding regular member pay raise be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, it indicates in there you have to respond as to what choice you want to pay only a portion of it in this third quarter or the whole amount. Um, if we are <coughs> potentially in a surplus situation, we might be we want to take a close look at you know, paying that expenditure all off right now instead of trying to factor that into next year's budget. I think that administration has had some thoughts about uh, that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of already in tune to kind of what you had mentioned. So uh, we're, we're kind of in the same path as far as that goes um, but that's a good point point. and yeah and we haven't heard anything 
um, from AMM or the province, no. um, the feds picking up that tab instead of us? AMM continues to lobby, but no progress. <clears throat> Anything further? Councillor Delorier. What, why did they have it uh, broken down at 100% or 70%? What, what? I think they're just showing you what the 100% cost is. The 70% share is what. Is what we are yeah. responsible for. Okay. Anything further? All in favor? It's carried. 6.2. Resolve the building permit 7221 through 7421 with a total estimated value of $180,000 be received. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1, result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Reports. 7.3, sorry. Uh, Councillor Delorier. Uh, nothing to report, but I still have a question on 6.1. Are we, like the letter asked if we were going to request anything other than 25%? Well, we can we can put more if we want. This is an estimated number. Yeah. So at budget time, if we want to budget more to expect, like we can, we can. So we're just gonna go with the 25% for right now then? I haven't discussed that directly with the CFO yet, but uh, okay. that will be shown to you. Okay. It's an option, I guess. Well, you bet we have to decide by tomorrow. Right. Yes. So yeah, maybe then tomorrow. what we should do is um, have this discussion in camera. Okay. For the discussion. Okay. So then we can move on to 7.2. Seven point three. Mm -hmm. Pardon? The wage? You're first. You're yeah, one. Well, you didn't have any other report. No. Just okay. That question. <laughs> okay. Councillor White. Well, it's been uh, relatively slow uh, for myself, uh, other than uh, a few PMH phone calls because of our, all of our concern with COVID, and uh, apparently it might get a little more difficult. But this uh, light at the end of the tunnel, the Omicron variant appears to be less. Less effective at killing people, that's not the right word, it's killing less people, and it may make us some hurt uh, immunity. Having said that, uh, there's no reason that we shouldn't be practicing distancing, wearing our masks, and being vaxxed. Uh, the other thing that took a little time on this holiday is I spent a lot of time with to visit our family for Merry Christmas, and uh, that's a priority for all of us, I'm sure. So, uh, the report is all, my family is all well and healthy, and uh, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Councillor Bobbitt. Uh, just a little bit about watershed is uh, we have our elections coming up in uh, January here, or this month, I guess I should say. Uh, so we'll be looking for direction from the councils on which we were appointed. I don't know if we received a letter from them or anything else. As of yet. Uh, we, we've been requested to be selected to be appointed. We haven't finalized this. Let's do that on Monday. That would be great for tentatively looking at January. Uh, uh, with the COVID thing, we'll probably have a meeting next, early next week sometime to set up what we're going to do with these elections. So it might may be similar to what's last year. Go over the board. Other than that, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year, good health for the year, a little warm temperatures. That would be nice. Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Sorry, I've had too many mouses running around there to remember which one is which. 
Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, nothing for me to report in terms of meeting. I just wanted to once again thank Councillor Bobic for the $100 Council Challenge towards uh, the COPP program. So thank you for that. And Councillor Bobic, I do believe that you should have or uh, or will be receiving a certificate that was in transit, as well as the town of Swan River. I believe that you received a certificate from the COPP group itself. So um, with that being said, uh, there, we still have crime in our community, um, along with COPP and all the individuals working together. We are trying to make a, a safer community. Unfortunately, there are still crimes happening um we are working hard to uh get to the roots causes with the business consortium and with the uh task force as well happy new year to everyone out there um frigid temperatures out there so please stay safe uh, wishing everybody a, a good health and good tidings for the new year and to all my ukrainian family and friends out there christos thank you Okay, thank you. Councillor Friesen. I wish I could say that. I have that written on here. Merry Christmas for Ukrainian Christmas this coming weekend. So what he just said. Um, we just decided today our church is being closed till February due to the COVID. We have a lot of seniors and we just uh, really has to about uh, meeting. So that's my news. Uh, the lights will be turned off at the museum on uh, 9th of January, so that will be the end of the light show. And uh, thank you, Donnie, for the reindeer in our front yard. I would look at getting a building permit for that statue. What? I would look at getting a building permit for that statue <laughs> that's on your lawn. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. By the officer will be checking that next week. <laughs> welcome back. Uh, um, thanks. Um, <coughs> I had no meetings in the last two week period since our last council meeting. So, uh, but uh, since it's our first meeting of the year, happy new year to uh, council and administration and to all our residents uh, in the town. Um, and just with a reminder from the transportation department that uh, with all the snow that's accumulated here uh, recently to uh, please make sure that your vehicles are off the streets so that our public works employees can uh, um, quickly and uh, efficiently uh, clean our streets so everybody's out there safe and uh, get that snow removed as quickly as possible and we all have to come back numerous times around parked cars. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, good. Well, I think it's all been said for me, but uh, or for, for, from my perspective anyways, but uh, um, I, with the folks that are celebrating the, the Julian calendar, definitely want to wish them a very Merry Christmas, when I certainly can't talk the the uh, the, uh, the, the Ukrainian uh, versus Mr. Antoni can, but I certainly wish that I could. I probably could, but uh, not tonight. I'm going to try. So, thank you. Uh, anything from the CEO? Uh, yeah, just to let council know, we're just awaiting meeting dates from uh, Antoni's Bozeman for the purchase service discussions. And regarding the EV uh, charging station, I did have a resolution to the agenda today for just to let council know that that uh, is being asked of us tonight so we can get that application in uh, for next week. And just wanted to mention uh, the process of, of our budget and our strategic plan. So hopefully, if not January 11th, it could be the 18th, but the plan is for the 11th to advertise our strategic plan to the public. Uh, we want to inform the public to watch out for the town flash. It's a one or two page information package. It'll be consistently sent from the CAO to the residents and businesses where we need to let our residents know about any information and uh, more importantly, what the town is working on and what we may be possibly working on. It'll be a pretty wide information package, but uh, that template is being built and and that needs to start. Uh, and uh, in my report, just for council to know that we do plan to have a, a small review on the 18th 
and have a full uh, budget presentation on February 8th, Calgary, uh, which, which we will get to. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Moving on to 8, 8.1. Resolved that the Director of Public Works be directed to write a letter to Manitoba Infrastructure requesting a traffic study at the Main Street at 11th Avenue and the Main Street and 12th Avenue intersections be undertaken to assess if a controlled intersection is warranted at one of those, one of the intersections. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? carried 8.2 result of the town of Swan of approved 439 Main Street as an approved consideration for the location of a level 3 electric vehicle fast charger EV3 charging station moved by Councillor De uh, White seconded by Councillor Delorier discussion so this comes from Morial. Um, I got to admit, uh, when I first seen the topic on the last agenda, I was a little bit skeptical of it. Um, but since the excellent presentation from uh, the young lady that came um, to our last council meeting, um, I did a little bit of reading up on it and stuff like that. And uh, I got to say her points uh, were bang on and definitely uh, changed my views on it. So um, definitely with the tourism industry and the route north, uh, if we can uh, secure one of those charging stations, uh, it's just another feather in our cap for the community to make ourselves more friendly and welcoming and an attraction to the community. So, uh, well done on the young lady that came here the other night. So. Yeah, it is Sarah Kazakoff who's heading up the project. She has done a lot of research. She's constantly learning and and is definitely behind getting this, uh, getting an EV charging station in the town of Swan River. Just so council knows that this this approval will give us the ability to say that it can go here, and uh, but it, it is not our first priority to have this parking lot to have the station. She's looking at dealerships, private places all over town where uh, really would be a much more suitable location for it, but. Uh, to have an approved location uh, set in our application is advantageous. So that's why we want this fast. Okay. okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I guess even on that, uh, today I believe it was Ford announced that they're going to be pumping out more 150s in electrical just because of the huge demand that they've been receiving in the last six months, I think it was reality. 9.1 resolve that bylaw 11 2021 being a bylaw governing council indemnities be received and read a second time. Moved by Councilor White, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Um, looking at section four had, as administration we looked at or adjust, looked at adjusting those rates at all, um, but that the the daily stipend um, for that, or are we nope. intending to leave that as is? I obviously intended to leave that as is. It was uh, the indemnities that weren't there. I filled them in. And I did not increase the one half day or the one full day. We can. Uh, I don't want to pick something out of the tree. We should take a look. Yeah, this is the second reading that can be always uh, changed prior to the third reading. Yeah. Unless there's an appetite to, well, I guess we can change it uh, prior to the third reading. So. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 
Councillor uh, or Deputy Montoni, I don't know if there's a delay there because uh, I often watch even when Councillor Morio's uh, on. Uh, I don't know if there's a huge delay, so I, I kind of always watch and and make sure that you know if somebody thinks that you might be voting against or for. So there's always seems to be a little bit of pause there. So there must be a little bit of a delay. I was I was delayed that time too. I apologize. Okay. I am in favor. Okay. Thank you. So with uh, 9.2, are we leaving that off then? We don't have to bring it to the table. We can make those changes and bring it to the next meeting. But if it's there, do we have to read it? And then I guess if you're going to move in the second year. Okay. You can read it if you're moving in the second year. I guess because it's on the agenda, I'm just wondering if you're supposed to actually read it. There's no, no mover to seconder, then it is okay. I think maybe that's the right way to do it. Or it can Res be tabled. What's that? Or it can be or, tabled. Or it can be tabled. Resolve the bylaw 11 2021 being bylaw governing council indemnities be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Morio. I'm sorry, Councilor uh, Deputy Mary Wintoni. Discussion? Um, I'm good with that section four as is. Okay. I, just, I just questioned it in the last one if it was looked at and set that up, but I'm, I'm good with the current rate set in there. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. It's a recorded vote. All in favor? Councillor. Um, well, I know you're out of the room, but we we're just reading the third reading on the council indemnities. Did you want to vote or do you want to? I'll vote. Okay. In favor or opposed? In favor? Okay. It's carried. Okay. 10, 10.1. Resolved the, the accounts as follows, but hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28449 to 28479, totaling $43,585.71 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5010 to number 5016, totaling $89,981.73 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $725 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposits totaling $37,561. And 96 cents as listed in Schedule D. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick? Uh, just a question on the base value. Can you break it down to a unit price for you? Uh, I believe it's $14. Delivered? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Delorier? Um, 28454, four. Uh, I know what it's for. It's fairly substantial amount, considering we haven't had any movement on there. Or we, maybe there has been, but I guess, can we get an update on where that is if we're paying out that kind of a check? Yep. Um, we haven't had an update in, the, in a while on where that's at. Actually, we did update that. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 13. Resolved in pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act, Council Building Committee, and close the uh, meeting to the public. Items to be discussed in its recreation and building inspector contract. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried, we're in camera. Uh, result of this regular meeting of council now adjourned at 8.50 p.m. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion, all in favor, opposed, it's carried, we're adjourned.